Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm sharing my recipe for some fried bakes, also known as floats in Guyana. Now, in today's video, I'm doing it a little bit different. I'm mixing some whole wheat flour alongside some regular all-purpose flour just to give you guys a different variation on this dish. If you want to make it totally from all-purpose flour, I'll have my recipe linked right up here in the right-hand corner because I already did a video for that. But if you want to mix it up a little bit today in the kitchen, please go ahead and keep on watching to see how I make these soft, fluffy, and perfect bakes. Making the fried bakes are very simple. All we're going to do is start off in a bowl and we're going to add in our whole wheat flour as well as our all-purpose flour. Now you can play around with the proportions for this recipe. I'm using two parts all-purpose flour to one part whole wheat flour, but you could go ahead and use half and half. You could use more whole wheat than all-purpose or you could even use all whole wheat for this and you will get amazing results as well. Now once you add these two flours in, you're going to go in with a little pinch of salt. That's going to really help bring out all of the flavor of the bake and just give it a better flavor overall. And then you're going to give it a quick mix with your clean hands. And once you've mixed both flours with the salt together, you're going to go in with your baking powder. Now a little word about the baking powder. I recommend using the amount that I put in the description box down below alongside the other ingredients and measurements just because if you add too much baking powder it can make the bakes start to fluff up too much and it'll make them rip on the inside which is not what you want and you'll see that does happen sometimes so you just have to be mindful of the amount of baking powder you add in. Now at this point I am adding in my sugar. I'm using a combo of brown and white sugar. That's because that's what I had on hand. I was running out of both of them so I just decided to combine the little bit of both that I had left. But by all means if you use one or the other you will still get amazing results. Now at this point I am also going to go in with some melted butter. If you don't have melted butter and you wanted to use Crisco or vegetable shortening that will work just as fine. I just do recommend that you use the melted version of them because if you use the cold version I find that the bakes do not come out as well as when you do them with the melted. And once you've mixed that butter in really well with all of the flour, the sugar and the salt you're going to go ahead and start to put in a little bit of warm water. Whenever you're making bake or roti or any type of dough, I always recommend that you use warm water because it helps to make sure that the end product is nice and soft. The only reason we would use cold water in a dough is if we were making a pastry dough for like pine tarts or any type of gaini style pastries. But with that said, I'm going in with my warm water a little bit at a time. I want to keep adding it in gradually and kneading it in within the flour until there is no more dried flour present and it is a very nice soft dough. You want to make sure that this is a soft dough and not something that is too hard because if it is too hard then your bakes will come out very stiff and they won't puff up properly. And once you get enough water combined to get a nice soft dough that is no longer sticking to your fingers you can go ahead and roll it into a ball cover it with some plastic wrap and allow it to sit for about 15 to 30 minutes just to allow the glutens to rest. I find that when you allow the glutens to rest for your bakes especially, you get perfect results every time and they always puff up. So I allowed my baked dough to sit for about 30 minutes because I was working on some other stuff in the kitchen. But basically after you let it sit for that couple of minutes, you're going to see that it gets nice and soft and that is because all of those glutens have relaxed. So at this point we can start to roll out our actual bakes. So what I like to do is go ahead and get a little bit of all-purpose flour on my surface, put the dough out on it and then break off little pieces of dough into my desired sizes. So I do about a 2-3 to three tablespoon sized ball and you guys could go ahead and make it larger or smaller depending on how big you want your bakes. And if you really wanted to and you didn't want to go through all of this process of breaking it into balls, rolling them out and rolling them out individually, you can go ahead and roll out the entire piece of dough and just cut it into squares and triangles and what other, other shapes that you want. And once you finish separating the entire piece of dough into little individual balls, depending on the size that you want, you're going to go ahead and round them off. Now this is a very, very important step because if you don't do this properly, then what's going to happen is your bakes will not fluff up properly. So what you're going to want to do is go ahead and take the palm of one of your hands and take your fingers in your other hand and you're going to go ahead and keep folding it over on itself and then you're going to pinch the edges together just like how I'm doing on this screen. You're going to want to do this for every single one of the balls 
until you finish with the entire batch. Now again, if you did not want to do individual balls and make individual bakes, you can go ahead and just roll out the entire piece of dough, cut it, and fry it as is, and they will puff up that way. And once you finish rounding off all of your bakes, you're going to go ahead and put them under a damp paper towel or you can put them in an air container and let them sit for another 15 to 30 minutes. This is just to ensure that those glutens relax again and your bake is not too stiff. So I allow these little balls of dough to rest for about 15 minutes. Again, that's just to allow the glutens to relax again and for us to get really, really soft bakes. So at that point, you're going to go ahead and dip the ball into some dried flour and you're going to roll it out until you get your desired thickness. Just remember, if you make these bakes too thin, they will not puff up. So I don't recommend going less than about a quarter of an inch. If you go less than that and you start making like a puri or a roti thickness, then it will not puff up in the hot oil. So make sure to go ahead, keep watching out for that thickness and just go ahead and practice with it. Sometimes it takes a lot of getting used to and a lot of practice before you can master some of these things. But basically this is what you're looking for and I'm going to keep rolling out all of my bakes until I finish rolling out all of the balls. The reason why I like to roll out all of the balls is this way I can just focus on frying once all of them are rolled out. I find that when you go ahead and roll and fry at the same time it's just a lot of work and a lot of confusion in the kitchen especially if you are a first time chef or somebody that is not well practiced in making dishes like this. Just a little word of advice though when you're rolling out all of your bakes and getting them all rolled out at one time make sure you don't stack them up on each other like directly on top of each other just make sure you keep them just around each other sort of like what I did right there and keep them well floured so this way they do not stick because the last thing you want is to get all of those beautiful bakes rolled out and then they're all stuck together and you can't fry them. Now I don't know about you guys but this is such a beautiful sight. All of my bakes are perfectly round, they're rolled out and they are ready to fry. Now by all means if you do this step like I said and roll them all out before you start to fry, it's going to make your life so much easier because these bakes do not even take a minute to fry each so it'll go by very very quick. So as you're rolling out the last few of your bakes you want to make sure your oil is heating up to a medium medium high heat. If the oil is not hot enough then the bakes are going to absorb a lot of oil, become very oily and saturated. And trust me, they will not be crispy on the outside at all, and they'll just be soggy throughout. That is not what you want. So as soon as you put it into the hot oil, it should flow to the top, and it should begin to puff up as you see here. You're going to want to go ahead and start pressing on it lightly with the spoon like I'm doing in a rocking motion, or you can go ahead and keep splashing the oil on top of it. Just be careful that you do not splash yourself and burn yourself, because that is very dangerous. But basically, once you see that it puffs up, you're going to turn it over right away. Allow it to cook for about another 20 to 30 seconds or until you get the desired brownness all over the bake and then it is ready to come out of the hot oil. And once you remove one bake from the hot oil, just go ahead and plop another one in there and continue the same exact step until all of your rolled out pieces of bake are done. Now, if you wanted to, you could fry more than one inside of the hot oil at the same time. But as you guys can see, I'm using a smaller size pot today and one bake fits the size of the pot pretty well. So I'm not going to go ahead and overcrowd the pot too much. But by all means, if you were using a larger pan and you could fit more, feel free to do that as well. Again, I just put it in, splashing some hot oil on top and flipping it over as soon as it puffs up, keeping it there for a few seconds and then I'm going to remove it from the oil. So I just wanted to show you guys, by the time you're getting towards the end of frying all of your bakes, you're going to see that at the bottom of the pot, you're going to have a little bit of brown crumbles at the bottom. That's basically any of the excess flour that were on your bakes after you were finished rolling them. They tended to get to the bottom of the oil and they started to burn a little bit. This is one of the reasons why as you're rolling out your bakes, you want to make sure you do not use too much flour. You need just enough to make sure they don't stick, but you don't want too much or else all of that flour, the excess will go to the bottom of the oil and it's going to burn. As you guys can see, I only have a little bit, but when I first started making bakes, the bottom of my pot would be full of burnt flour and that is not what you want because if you have too much, then it can start to make the bakes taste a little bitter and acrid and it can actually start to burn the bakes in the pot. So 
So all of my bakes are done frying. I'm super happy with how all of them turned out. Now I got about nine bakes from this batch. Now you might get a little bit more, you might get a little bit less, just depending on how big or small that you made them. But as you guys can see, once I rip open into them, they're super soft and fluffy on the inside and they're nice and thin like how I like my bake. If you like a thicker bake, make sure you keep it rolled out a little thicker. But honestly, however thick or thin that you roll it out, you're still gonna get a really soft, pliable and fluffy bake. But that is as quick and as simple as it is. Again, remember, if you wanted to use all whole wheat flour for this recipe, feel free to do so. If you wanted to mix up the proportions of the flours and use whatever proportion that you'd like, feel free to do so as well. You will still get the perfect bakes. Again, all of my ingredients and measurements are in the description box down below, so be sure to check that out. And if you're done watching this video, go ahead and give it a nice big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed yet and become part of the Matthews Guyanese cooking family. And of course, keep leaving your comments down below. I'll see you guys again next time.